Well, I am not an industry leader, but I just, I'll just try to be, uh, you know, someone. So uh, I'll just try to, you know, keep my talk very limited, and uh, you know, we'll just try to, you know, since okay, le let's do a raise of hand. How many of you are from the technology background? Okay, majority of them. How many of you want to be an entrepreneur after you graduate from the college? Okay, so that means you guys are not sitting for the campus placements, right? Okay, I just heard three voices. Anyways, so uh, I founded Ziffy. Uh, it's a dynamic artificial intelligence based coupling application. This was uh, way back in 2014. But, uh, you know, we've been doing this for the last two years. And at this point of time, we have become one of the largest coupling companies in India. And, uh, you know, we have operations in two countries across, uh, you know, five cities. So we are also live in Ireland and very soon will be available across Europe and US. So today I'll just limit my talk of how, uh, you know, we started the journey and, you know, how we brought technology into our daily lives. So Sifi is all about connecting people. How many of you travel by cars? Oh, your own car? Holy shit, I thought you guys are expensive. Right. Anyways, so, uh, you know, this is a problem which all of us face on a daily basis, right? But, uh, you know, before Ziffy, there were around 37 to 35 companies who were trying to do this in the past. But none of them have been able to actually succeed or reach up to a certain level where they can call themselves as successful or someone who has actually make carpool work, right? Because we as Indians, we worship our cars one day in a year, right? And our status in the society is known by the brand and the length of the car which we own. Isn't that correct? So how do you convince or how do we motivate people to actually share something which they hold so close to their heart? So it was always a question of do we want technology to actually solve that problem or do we have to you know, look at other ways through which we can actually solve this particular problem? Now it turns out, now, before I go further, you know, these are certain numbers why we call ourselves. So we have, uh, you know, we do almost more than 1,30,000 trips in a month. Well, uh, it has now increased to close to 1,50,000. Uh, we have, you know, more than 1.5 million trips which has been shared on our platform so far. And in fact, for a lot of, uh, you know, a good amount of time, we were trending better than Ola's and the Ubers. So how did we achieve that? You know, and why we succeeded, I mean, not yet, but, you know, why we came so far why others couldn't do. Now, there is a very thin line between, uh, you know, implementing, knowing technology and implementing technology to solve a certain particular problem. Now, we as engineers or we as technology specialists, we have a habit of infusing too much technology each and in each and everything that we do. And in turn, what happens, we make things way too complicated. And I think that is one of the major reasons why most of the companies or most of the startups which you see as of today are failing. You know, even companies who have raised 50 or 100 million dollars, they have not been able to actually do a good amount of job, right? Now, what is the role of technology in our daily life? Can, can someone define that to me or can someone just share their experience? Okay. Technology makes our life easier. Uh, what else? I just need two more points. To make the world a better place to live. Okay. Now, there was a very, you know, subtle message in all the three things which these gentlemen have said, right? These are related to us as people, right? Technology is to help us as person. You know, it makes us, you know, uh, it makes our life much easier to actually do. You know, for a... Example, phone call, you know, your mobile phone. If you have to call someone, you simply dial the number and you talk to them. Unlike a decade back where you have to go to a PCO, ISD, STD, and you have to feed in the numbers and then call and do all those things. So, you know, understanding that, that technology is just a, you know, part which will solve the problems. Technology is not the answer to all the problems. Technology is just a medium that can actually solve problems for you. So we understood that problem and we identified you know, that we have to talk to people and understand what they need. Now, typically what happens is, you know, uh, I've been talking to a lot of uh, you know, budding entrepreneurs and they come up to me and say, they, hey Anura, you know, we have this beautiful idea, we have this beautiful product which we are building, but uh, all we need is funding. Well, 
99.99% of the times they have no idea what they will do after six months. You know, they just look at the way that you know, any startup or any product needs funding. But turns out you have to really feel what your product is actually going to do. Now, in our case, when I started Ziffy, I had absolutely zero amount. You know, I, I was totally someone who would you know, go and spend his monthly income on dresses or I'll go and party, I'll go on vacations and stuff like that. So I did not have any money to actually start the company. So how do we build our MVP? How many of you know about MVP? Can someone define that? MVP? No? Okay, so MVP is called as a minimum viable product, right? So which does the most basic, or which solves the most basic problem that you are trying to actually solve. So in our case, in case of Ziffy, our minimum viable product was our car. We did not need an application to actually do a carpool. So instead, what we started to do was, starting February 2014, me and one of my friends, we actually started to stop at various bus stations and auto rickshaw stands across Hyderabad before we were going to our offices. And we used to ask random people if they want to carpool with us or not. If you go to Gachiboli or Madhapur area, you can see people you know, wearing a batch. You can easily identify whether this person is working in Infosys or TCS or also. So we were not worried about the security part because we already knew that uh, you know, these guys, they are working in a company who's a very well-known company to be set for. So we started to do that and uh, what we realized was most of the people, they did not knew that there is a concept called carpooling. Right? So we introduced this concept to them. We told them that this is how you could do. So rather than you know, getting, giving 10 rupees and having your half behind, hanging out of the auto rickshaw with eight folks in a three-wheeler, you, know, you can travel at the same cost in a much more comfortable ride back to the office. And you can increase your social network organically. Right? Now someone said that technology makes our life easier. Now technology makes our life beautiful. Now we all are on social media, we all are on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn or any other stuff like that, but that's all virtual, right? If, if, when you are at your home and it's your birthday, how many people come to you and to cut the cake? It's just your neighbors or very close friends, right? But we have like, what, 1,500, 2,000 friends on Facebook, 5,000 followers on Twitter and so many likes and so many. Those things are all virtual, right? How do you interact with people in real life? So that's how we started to actually do. Now, I'll just skip this part, which all of us were getting initially. When we were starting up Ziffy, that what makes us unique? How will we solve this particular problem? Even the VCs were asking, you know, there are 37 other countries, or, sorry, companies who are trying to do the same thing in this area. How are you different? Why should I bet my money on? And trust me, I, I met my first investor while I was carpooling, right? So the thing that makes Ziffy unique is that we consider Ziffy as an offline social network. It's not just a carpooling platform. Now, this is a very interesting story that happened last year in August, sorry, October 2015. So this is this gentleman who's a senior product manager with IBM. And uh, just like you guys, someone from uh, you know, one of the colleges in West Bengal, he joined Tech Mahindras as a fresher. And he was carpooling with that person for almost a month. And then all of a sudden, we receive an email, thank you email from the same guy saying that, hey, because of you, I got a better job opportunity at IBM. Thanks for me connecting with these guys. So that's the power when you connect people together in a real life scenario, right? And that's what we identified, that this is something which will motivate people to actually meet. Now, most of us, we are stuck in the traffic for almost like an hour on a daily basis. You know, you will not understand the importance of that 60 minutes or one hour when you are in that traffic, but when you are old, when you are on your deathbed, that time you will wish God that please give me five minutes extra to live. Am I right or wrong? Right? On a daily basis, we spend more than two hours traveling from our home to college or home to office and back home. How many times we work in a month? 22 days. How many months are there in a year? 12. 12 into 22? You guys are engineers, I'm pretty bad at mathematics, so I will not uh, you know, utter that answer. So you can actually calculate, right? So if you club all those numbers, over your lifetime, you spend more than one and a half years of your lifetime being stuck in that stupid traffic. Just there, sitting there idle. What, what max you can do, you can just simply change the radio you know, frequencies to listen to some songs or you know, all those things. But is there something which we can do meaningful with that 
you know, two hours or 60 minutes or 90 minutes, whatever we spend on a daily basis. Can we interact with new people on a daily basis? Can we, you know, meet new people on a daily basis? Can we listen to their stories on a daily basis? Yes, you can. You just have to ask someone that, hey, can I travel with you? Because you are also traveling in the same direction. Now, one very interesting thing was majority of the companies, they were trying to actually, you know, match people. Typically, carpooling works where you match few people at a particular location, right? But let me ask you, what is the probability of finding two or three people at the same time, at the same point, going to the same destination? Very thin, right? And that is one of the reasons why the other companies had failed in the past. So what we did was, the moment you go out on the streets, you see thousands and thousands of cars just passing by. Is there a way we can connect people to, the, to those cars? So we need to identify people who are traveling in the same direction, passing through you. Right. Now, all this was possible when you, you know, with all your technical knowledge and everything. So, see, the first mistake as an entrepreneur is what we do is we right away jump, open our laptops, open Eclipse, or open Node.js, or whatever technology anybody is comfortable with, and start writing code. Right. And then after, you know, struggling for like a month or six months, we write thousands and thousands of lines of code, and we have absolutely no idea what this product is going to do. That's, that's the problem. So you understand what, is, what works and then implement it in real life. See, as entrepreneurs, we have to be connected with real life a lot. Then only we'll be able to solve the problem. Now, if you don't feel the problem, like in my case, I was, I was a driver, not like a taxi driver, but anybody who's driving his own car is a driver, right? So I myself was a driver for the last 15 years. Is this product, am I going to use the product which I'm building right now? So I had to test it. Am I motivated enough to use it on a daily basis? If I'm not using my own product, then what is the point of me wasting my time and others' time and others' money to actually build something which I'm never going to use? So you need to actually try out all those things. So can you change that? Huh? So this is how we, and you know, one more challenge what we identified was off lately, uh, people always compare us with Olas and Ubers and taxis, whereas we are a complementary solution to a taxi. Now, which company or which service in the world will take you 10 kilometers for 35 rupees? Is there a company? Is there a service? No. So when you go and take Uber Pool or Ola Share, do we have any guys from Ola or Uber here? No, right? I don't want to be receiving code notice <laughs> about all those things. Right? So if, if you take an Ola Share or an Uber Pool, uh, you know, they say that cheapest ride available, right? Only if you're lucky, then you don't get a surge pricing, right? We, we don't have anything called a surge pricing because our supply side is people like you and me. We are not taxi drivers. Our lives are not financially dependent on this particular pr platform. We work somewhere else. We have a handsome salary which makes our, uh, you know, which takes care of our family and our life. We are just doing this, sharing it with others so that the vehicle which is considered as a liability, right? The moment you get a new car, 15% depreciation is there. A 10 lakh car becomes a 8.5 lakh car. The moment you take it out of your, you know, out of the showroom, can we convert that into something which, you know, does not become a financial burden on me? That's the only thing what people are actually doing on Ziffy. And that is something which we identified when we ourselves started to actually carpool. So, and one more thing what we identified was people were constantly confusing us with Ola's and Uber. Oh, are you like Ola? Are you like Uber? I said, no, stupid. We are not like Ola or Uber. But you know what? I will build something which you were already accustomed to use. Right? So people were already familiar with this sort of an interface. You know? We wanted to place Ziffy as an alternative to Ola or alternative to Uber or as a matter of fact, alternative to any taxi service. So for traveling 10 kilometers, you don't have to pay 150 or 200 rupees or 500 rupees you know, on any platform. You can simply pay 35 rupees and travel. So we wanted people to actually consider that this, is, this does the same thing as these applications, but a far more lesser cost. Right? So then we identify how do you bring so much you know, dynamicity to an application which is dependent on so many use cases. I cannot ask a car owner to actually, hey, you have to travel at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow. But the reason why you know, people will actually share with each other is when they establish trust. Yes. So we have something called as a, and now, now this is something, you know, how do you rate a person? You can only rate the experience, right? Now imagine, let's say you, the, the one with the specs. 
You are searching for a right. Oh, both of them are wearing specs. Okay, both of you, right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not wearing specs and it's a little far, so. so imagine you guys are searching for a ride, okay, and you get a picture like this, and so you have to choose with whom you want to actually travel. And everywhere you'll have ratings, right? So this is rated five star by 100 people, 500 people, 1,000 people. But would you not have a question in your mind saying that what is the guarantee that I'm not the first female to travel with this guy? Is that a genuine concern? What if I can tell you that out of that 100, 40 were females and 60 were males? Okay, I'm not the first female to travel with this guy. He's a safe guy, right? Did we have to, did we have to write any extra lines of code? No. We did not you know, sat or wrote any extra lines of code, we just picked the data as it is from the database and showed. Because of this, out of that 101,30,000 trips, 73% of those trips are done by a female. We are the only company in India, transport company in India, with more than 70% of female users, for a very simple fact. Was it a technological innovation? I would say this was a lazy solution, right? But immediately, that's what. If you have to connect people, you know, we use the same technology to connect and build trust between two set of users. And I wouldn't be surprised if someone, you know, gives, you know, sends me an email saying that, thank you, I found my life partner with Ziffy. I wouldn't be surprised because of that. So we have a couple of users, uh, you know, who are driving Jaguar and Mercedes S-Class on. Ziffy. So if you are lucky enough, you can probably carpool with them. Right? Uh, next slide, please. So now this is one more very interesting thing what we actually try to implement here. Now, you know, let's face it. You know, we as Indians, we are pathetic at giving all due respect to this other person. Uh, can we agree to this fact or not? We are not very, you know, not a very bunch of nice people, to be very frank. You know, uh, Typically, the moment we say, okay, fine, can I travel with you? I will expect you to come right in front of me to pick me up at the same time I would expect that. Hey, you know what? I don't care if you're a CEO of a company. You have to be here at 8.30 a.m. because I have to go to my office. I don't care. Right? Because we have paid. Now, in the back slide, I don't know if you have noticed or not, you cannot book anything on Ziffy. You can only request. Technically, there is no difference. But psychologically, what it means that I can only request you, just like Facebook or LinkedIn. Now, the car owner will have the option, hey, you know what, I don't like your face. <laughs> Happens, right? It's a social network. You, you, you are bringing two strangers together in a confined space who are going to spend 90 minutes together. Now, one very interesting, you know, everybody talks about security, security, security. Do you really care about security when you travel in an auto or a taxi or a bus? Does it mean that the crowded that particular vehicle is the safer you are? Moreover, you are traveling at a time when there are tens and thousands of people on the road and we Indians have a habit of peeping inside every other car every now and then. So it's a crowd-sourced security which we have. So we don't really worry about the security part also. Now, the reason why I'm telling all those things, oh, I forgot about this slide, my bad. Now, here what we have done is, when a car owner, typically in a carpooling, this thing, when a car owner starts, so the passenger, let's say you, gentlemen, again with the specs and the phone, yes, you, let's say you are the car owner, and I'm the passenger, I am a poor guy, I don't have a car, and I need to travel at the cheapest mode of transportation, right? So I will call you, hey, have you started? You say, no, in the next five minutes. We all know how long our five minutes are, right? After 15 minutes, two more minutes. After two minutes, bus, I will sit there, in front of And then I will keep on calling, keep on calling, keep on. And by the time you take a phone to answer that call, someone from the back, then what will happen is, I will carpool the car, thank you very much. That's a genuine problem, right? Or else, second scenario is, the, you say that, hey, you know what, I've already started, I'll be there in five minutes. I'm a very disciplined guy. I'm a very, you know, good and a nice guy. So I'll say, oh, no, no, I have to come and go there, I'll stand there in the sun and it's raining. Where the hell is that guy? Where the hell is that guy? Have you started? Well, no, I'm coming. So it's always a constant, you know, clash between these two set of people. And these are the two users who will make Ziffy successful, right? So when we are getting late for our offices, when we are getting late for our 
classes. Usually, I know the guys will relate to this. When we are in the hostel sleeping, we have our 8.30 a.m. class. We'll sleep like this, right? And then <laughs> we can't do that with our offices, right? So what we decided was we should let everybody know that, hey, you know, the, the technology should automate the whole process. So our application understands the traveling patterns. So a car owner's and a passenger's home address and office address is not going to change very frequently, unless and until he's a homeless guy, right? So we know that he's going to travel from this place to this place at this particular time. Send the message. He is starting. And you have the technology, the biggest technology enabler in your hand in terms of the mobile application. You can easily track whether. So we implemented that GPS tracking also. Turns out people did not want it because people wanted to save their phone battery as well as 3G data connection. It's a genuine problem for all of us Indians. We prefer Wi-Fi because it's frigging free. I don't have to pay so much to Airtel or Vodafone or anything. So, you know, the whole thing on which Ziffy is designed is, it's a very, very, very simple way we have implemented what is required, only that. And if you look at, you know, uh, you, if you look at the, the, the message which is behind Ziffy, it's actually about trust. How many of you know about the seven deadly sins? Has anybody heard? Yeah, there is one guy. Dude, do you read a lot? Or two guys? Do you guys read a lot? No? Or you've just seen the movie Seven? Okay, okay, I got it. So, can you, can you quickly, uh, the last two minutes, can you guys guess why Facebook is so successful? Connecting people, I've already told you, I don't know anything. No, no, related to the seven deadly sins. So, the seven deadly sins, I don't know all the seven deadly sins. I know about sloth, I know about lust, I know about gluttony, I know about envy, pride. Right? So the LinkedIn, Facebook is basically based on ego. The more number of likes you get on your post, your ego is built. It's called as the ego you know, economy. Facebook is also known as the eco economy, right? LinkedIn is all about greed. I have so many recommendations. Please recommend me. Please recommend me. I've never seen you in my life. No, it doesn't matter. Please recommend me. I will also recommend you. Right? Instagram, envy. Zomato, gluttony. Oh my God, what a food. Can I go there? No, sir, we don't serve this. See, these companies have invoked a human feeling. The moment you forget that technology is just a medium to enforce or bring that human feeling in your product, you will fail. And if you have identified that, identified that connection, that whatever we build, any product or any technology, is being utilized or consumed by a human, not some baboons or apes or monkeys. We don't have that technologically advanced solution which will be used for them. And in fact, actually, we do. Yes, we do. We have the cameras. You don't need a very, you know, uh, anyways, come back to the discussion, right? Uh, so without taking much time, I'll just quickly end it right here. If you guys decide, and for you know, my sincere request, you know, don't worry about money, don't worry about your career. I think you guys are way too young to think about the frigging money or the career. There are lakhs and lakhs of jobs. Do we have the college authorities also inside? No? Okay. Okay. Can we shut the door? Your placement officer is going to sit on your head saying that if you don't sit for this, this is blasphemy. I'm coming in a college and not telling them about this thing. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. See, uh, you've studied like for four years, right? For some of me, some of us, like me, I've studied four years course for almost for like five to six years, right? So I had a hard time to actually complete my engineering. But try something out, right? Yeah, whatever you have learned, try to implement that into the real life scenario. Be connected to the real world. Facebook likes and Instagram likes and all those things are all things of past. Nothing actually, you know, when you are hungry, your Facebook likes will not feed your, right? <laughs> so whatever you decide to actually build, and please do decide to build, always think from how a human is going to interact with that product. 
You don't have to have 100 different features. You just have to have one feature which people can actually relate to. Right? That is something which you have to have. So any product which is consumed by a human has to be in and around the human, I mean, it should be a human-centric product. You cannot expect the user to actually do this, do that, do blah, 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 and then think that I'll be a billionaire or a millionaire. No. Be realistic, be human, okay? Thank you very much.